Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seminole Tribe of Florida's Native Learning Center webinar for today. We're coming to you uh, live and direct from Hollywood, Florida, and so we welcome everyone to today's webinar. My name is Georgette Palmer Smith. I'm the executive director for the Native Learning Center. I am a member of the Kiowa Tribe of Oklahoma and I'm also of Choctaw descent. Today's webinar topic is workforce employer assisted housing and it is being presented today by Shelley Cucciarelli. This webinar provides a summary of fundamental concepts, requirements, and or procedures within the allotted 90 minutes. The material discussed does not illustrate all possible scenarios that could be applicable. To interact during this presentation, if you notice at the top of the screen, um, there is uh, use the hand tool and then a drop down will pop out and there you can raise your hand, agree, disagree, laugh, applaud, and you can even step away if you need to. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see on the bottom left hand side, uh, these are uh, handouts that's available for download at, in addition to the entire presentation, uh, which is number one there, it's a PDF. And so today's entire presentation is available for you to download. Uh, to download, you just hover over uh, the um, presentation and click on it and you'll be able to download it and then print it from there. And later on, we'll also be uh, presenting to you a, a feedback survey because we'd like to know what you thought of today's presentation and ways that we can, can improve. Uh, also, if you are on a desktop, or if you, I'm sorry, if you are on a web version, uh, sometimes it is a better connection if you download the Adobe Connect des desktop. So we have that avail available for you. And today's presenter, I've known her for many, many years now, uh, Shelly Tucciarelli. She's the owner and CFO of Turtle Clan Development, LLC. She's also the founder and executive director of Visionary Ventures, NFP Corporation. Shelly's a member of the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. Her reservation is near Green Bay. She's previously worked for 20 years at the Illinois Housing Development Authority, State Housing Finance Agency. She's also a board member for uh, an affordable housing nonprofit on the advisory board for five new market tax credit community development entities. And she has been working in affordable housing for over 30 years. Today's session, uh, Shelly's going to talk about how many companies, hospitals, colleges, casinos are utilizing employer-assisted housing programs. This program is a benefit offered by the employers to its employees to enable them to purchase homes. The employer-assisted housing program benefits can vary from different employers. The E. AH program enables employees to realize the dream of home ownership sooner than they might think. In the process, the employer builds a loyal base of employees living in important neighborhoods near their jobs. Employees can be a part of the rebirth of the neighborhood by being in close proximity to work. So after this webinar, you will gain an understanding of what the Employer Assisted Housing Program is, which employers are using the EAH program, how the EAH program works, who is eligible for the EAH program, and the benefits of the EAH program. And just a couple of housekeeping tips. Um, we just want to remind everyone that everyone is, is muted on this. Uh, on please, this use the, please use the chat room for any questions. So good afternoon, Shelly Tucciarelli. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Um, thank you so much, uh, Georgette. Um, let's open with a prayer today. I want to thank the creator for bringing us together. We have so much to be thankful for. It has been a couple of challenging years, but as we have seen, if we work together, 
we can accomplish great programs and projects for our tribal communities. Watch over us and give us strength and courage as we go through our journey. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending this webinar put together by the Native Learning Center. They are doing so many great things. These webinars are a great way to get valuable information out to our tribal members. I also want to thank Georgette and her staff for providing me the opportunity to be the instructor. Uh, as Georgette mentioned, I'm Shelley Tuzzarelli and owner of Turtle Clan Development Services. I'm also a tribal member of the Oneida Nation of Wisconsin. Uh, we have the Bear Clan, the Wolf Clan, and the Turtle Clan. And my family is part of the Turtle Clan, and that was the inspiration for my company name. Uh, the mission of my company is through training and technical assistance like these webinars to help tribal members and leaders to not only increase the quantity, but the quality of affordable housing and to develop or expand their economic development in their communities in Indian country nationwide. I'm also the founder and executive director of Visionary Ventures NFP Corporation. Our nonprofit is a Native American nonprofit 501c3 with an over 51% Native American board of directors and an advisory board with over 51% Native American members. Our mission is to work with community members to advocate and promote affordable housing, economic development and services to the Native American communities. In providing these opportunities, it helps to provide stability and hope to individuals and families. Our uh, nonprofit, uh, Visionary Ventures, was awarded uh, our first low income housing tax credit project from the city of Chicago to develop the first housing development for Native Americans in Chicago. This is history in the making. Uh, I will be doing a webinar on uh, July 27th and we'll be going over um, with the Native Learning Center to go over urban Indian housing and we'll discuss our development uh, as a case study. So please tune in for that. Previous to starting my own company, I worked for over 20 years with Illinois Housing Development Authority. They are the state housing finance agency that provides affordable housing for the entire state. I started in the asset management department and moved to the low income housing tax credit department and actually managed the program for a couple of years. I have been in affordable housing for over 30 years and it truly is a passion of mine. It is always great to do training with Indian housing authorities. These positions, especially the executive director are such important positions. They help to make our tribal members uh, getting into uh, decent quality housing, which we all know helps to stabilize families. These jobs can be sometimes a thankless position. I want to take the time now to thank you all for the great job that you are doing. After this last couple of years, when we all had to quarantine at home, we really realized how important it is to have that stable home environment. It's great to hear about all the new housing developments going up in Indian country. We all know there is such a great housing shortage in Indian country and in urban areas where there are large Native American populations. I just want to say that you are all making a huge impact on many families when you help them get a, into some into decent safe housing. We have to keep working on developing additional housing and programs for our tribal members on and off the reservation. As I just mentioned, you know, that there is really such a substantial need for all types of housing in Indian country. Um, we need multifamily housing, housing for our elders, and, you know, we really honor our veterans. So we want to be able to provide them with some housing because we know um, the homelessness um, in our veterans is really um, can be an issue. So we really want to be able to provide some housing for our veterans. Supportive housing is in great need as we're living a lot longer and we need to be able to provide that supportive housing. And also what we're going to be talking about today is employer assisted housing. So um, let's go ahead and under, start with understanding where what are some of the sources of funds that we could use to focus um, and build our workforce assisted housing. Uh, either development or um, a program to put together. If you're going to be developing housing, the low income housing tax credit program 
is the um, number one source of uh, for the for the, the number one source that's being used to develop affordable housing in the United States. Um, you know, some of states um, also have state housing tax credits. Um, we have the Home uh, Investment Partnership Program through HUD, uh, which is the home funds. Uh, we have state and local housing trust funds. Um, the we also have through the Federal Home Loan Bank. Uh, we have there's a an affordable housing program grant program that's very important if you're um, developing housing. There's also a lot of different state and federal energy and utility grants and other state and federal grants that are available. Uh, rural development, USDA loan grant guarantees and rural development, they have a lot of grant programs that can help with infrastructure. So please, uh, what you need to do is find out who your local rural development office is, where it's located and who your officer for your region is and uh, start those conversations. Also, the Native American Housing Assistance and Self-Determination Act, the NAHASDA funds, uh, we can use that, that for um, building or uh, housing programs. Also, your Indian Housing Block Grant, uh, again, can be used for housing and some programs for housing. Let's just go over briefly um, what the NAHASDA ob objectives are. They are to assist and prom promote affordable housing activities that develop, maintain, and operate affordable housing occupancy to low-income Native American families, to ensure better access to private mortgage markets for tribes and individual tribal members, coordinate activities to provide housing with economic and community development, such as building nursing homes and community centers, plan for and integrate infrastructure resources with housing development. We all know how important and expensive it is to get the sewer, water, and electric to your new housing developments. We need to start planning years in advance to get the infrastructure in place before we start planning for the housing development. Also to promote the development of private capital markets in Indian country. We all still struggle with this, but it is getting better. We all need to be using the low income housing tax credits, the new market tax credits and other federal, state and local funds if it is feasible for your project. Everyone else is accessing these funds. We need to be accessing these funds also. Employer assisted housing or EAH programs is any housing program, rental or home ownership that an employer finances or assists in some way. Communities face increasing pressure to provide more housing for local employees. Employers can work in partnership with their communities and tribal leaders to help address the affordable housing shortage. The result is a stable local workforce and a healthy local economy. There are many reasons why an employer would want to participate in the employer assisted housing. If your tribal community wants to expand economic development and needs to recruit new employees, you need to have a place for them to live. It helps to increase stability in the workforce and will then decrease turnover, which in time, which is very time consuming and inefficient when you have so much turnover. And also when you um, reduce the commuting time, it helps reduce absenteeism, tardiness and stress on your employees. And that helps to raise the morale of the employees and will also increase productivity. It also helps to improve the tribal community relations when the tribal council approves affordable housing. It also helps to stabilize communities by getting rid of or replacing some of your old housing on your reservation. It can also offer a return on tribal investment if it's structured properly. 
um, every year, you know, with your operations, those uh, the funds that you have left over, you start saving those to do your next project. There is also an opportunity to leverage matching funds from public and private funders that support employer assisted housing. What is the employer's role? Let's just take a look at this. Um, the employer first needs to evaluate what exactly are your housing needs for your tribal community. The best way to do this is through a housing needs assessment. The housing needs assessment will utilize tribal studies, um, that have already been performed or new studies that are, are being completed. Um, it, they, you can perform uh, surveys of your tribal community and have focus groups with tribal members and discuss it at uh, your tribal council meetings. Also, um, you want to determine how your tribe will participate. Uh, will you be building affordable housing or will you provide a housing program to help employees purchase homes or will you provide a rental subsidy for so that they can um, uh, rent housing that's near work? You know, you can determine what is your current housing capacity. You know, one thing you need to do is go through and just uh, evaluate how much housing you have now um you know you know is it possibility that you could uh, work with some private landlords that are within um you know the area of uh, your casinos or some of your you know where your employees work um and work with them uh to uh, provide a rent subsidy to them for your employee uh, another good strategy is to do a SWOT analysis. Um, and this will help determine, you know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities and what are your threats? And these, this kind of, the SWOT analysis is really kind of a great brainstorming tool in your initial planning process. After your housing needs assessment and you've completed a SWOT analysis, you kind of need to evaluate and choose what the best strategy should be for your tribal community. You know, is it, um, is it gonna be a project development or you're gonna increase uh, the supply of affordable housing or are you going to uh, create a program that will help employees purchase a home or give a rent subsidy for um, housing that's uh, within a maybe a whatever you determine like a five or ten min minute radius of the their employer. Your housing needs assessment. You know, once you've done it, okay, so now you've determined that you really need to build workforce uh, employer assisted housing that will be close to your casino and other tribal employment areas, such as your health center or other uh, tribal jobs. Um, because you've determined that, you know, once you've gone through your all of your um, housing needs, you've determined that you just do not have enough affordable housing for your employees. Now you are working in your feasibility phase. This is where you're going to be gathering all your information to make sure that your idea for your affordable housing project will be successful. You should have a vision statement for your project. Really, any program or project that you're working on, it's very important that you sit down with uh, whomever your team that you're working with in the planning process, sit down and do a, a vision statement. It can really be very, you know, it doesn't have to be any lengthy or anything. It can be very simple. Um, your vision um, statement, um, 
could be, you know, just to provide affordable workforce employer assisted housing for our employees so they can be in close proximity to work with less stress from a long commute. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, very detailed, but just so that you know what your vision is for this development. Your vision will also include, you know, the site, uh, where where you're going, where are you going to be building your housing? Uh, you need to determine um, the experience and knowledge of your current staff. Um, or do you have staff members that you that can be pulled away and be able to work on this project? You know, also you have to decide if at, the, at this point, you know, once you evaluate your team or your staff and what they can do with the project, you may decide now if you may need to um, hire a consultant to help. You will also determine if your project is financially feasible. If it's not financially feasible, you just can't move forward. Um, you, you need to really make sure that you're penciling this out in the beginning because you don't want to get halfway through a project and realize that you're not going to be able to complete it because you just don't have the funds to do. So you need to be doing all this in your planning process in the beginning. Uh, you know, do you want to make sure, do you have enough uh, tribal funds, federal funds, state and local funds and grants to build your housing? Remember, there is a lot of funds out there to build affordable housing. Uh, you know, we need to start by accessing as many of those funds as we can in order to make sure that our project is, is affordable. Your tribal housing authority or tribally designated housing entity or your tribal department, whatever you know your housing uh, area is called, will need to evaluate your current staff and who will be working on this affordable housing development. You definitely need uh, people that are knowledgeable in all of these areas. Uh, you need uh, somebody that's knowledgeable in the property development. Do you have the infrastructure in place? Or if not, how much and how long will that take? I meant property development, sorry. Um, yes, uh, so you need to know, you know, do you have that infrastructure in place? Or again, I said, if you're going to, if you need infrastructure, because we know a lot of times um, uh, we have all the land uh, but we just don't have the infrastructure in place. So again, this is where if you're planning to do housing, you need to do put your infrastructure in first and then uh, start planning for the housing. Your housing management. How are you currently managing your units? Uh, do you have clean audits from your local office of Native American programs? If you are doing a low income housing tax credit development, the state housing finance agency and your tax credit syndicator will both require that you have a third party management company with tax credit experience to manage this development for at least the first three years. They can work with your management staff so that they can learn the process and um, after the three years, you know, if uh, the state agency and the syndicator agree, uh, you will be able to take over the management of, of your tax credit project. You also need to know financial management. This is very important to have someone that can do the budget and the performer for the project. These numbers will continue to change even up to closing, the week of closing. You need someone that can monitor this process. Because a lot of times, you know, you may be um, applying for grants and things and you write, you know, as you're doing your budget, uh, you, you're not anticipating putting that money in because you're just applying for some grants. But once those grants come in, you need to put that in as part of your financing numbers. Also, raising government and private funds. You should already have someone on your staff that is continuously looking for grants and other funding for this project and all of your projects and programs. You should always be looking forward to the next project or the next program for your tribal community and keep looking for funding to make it happen. The money is out there um, 
and you just keep ha you just have to keep uh, writing those grants. Just keep applying for those funds. Uh, once you have evaluated your current staff and your skill set, you can now start putting your team together. As we mentioned, you have determined that your housing need for your community is to increase the supply of affordable housing so that you can provide workforce employer assisted housing for your employees. These are the steps that you will be taking. You will first need to assemble your development team. You have determined where you want the housing development to be located you also have already completed your budget and now it's time to take it to tribal council to gain support and approval. Next step is very important and can stop the project before it gets started. We all know that you have to have that support and approval of your uh, tribal council for anything to move forward. And we also know that uh, these are political issues in Indian country, just like everywhere else. We know that some projects can't get approved or can get approved and then there are elections and then uh, the new person says, oh, we're not doing anything uh, that my predecessor had planned. So it, it can cause a lot of problems with trying to get um, these, house, these housing projects because they take so long. It, it can take, um, you know, when we're having these elections and uh, trying to get that tribal council approval. One of the ways that um, some of these tribal communities are getting around this is that they are creating an economic development arm of their housing department. Once they have tribal council approval, it cannot be overturned. It really seems to be working in a lot of communities. Uh, also, we need to determine where your funding is coming from. Again, this is where your financial management uh, person will come into play. Uh, on my last project uh, that we got awarded um, a low income, my first low income housing tax credit project in Aurora, Illinois, uh, we had uh, John Hoffman and I worked with him previously as a when I was consulting with Baker Tilly and he was instrumental in helping putting our financing together and working to make sure that we were getting the best interest rates and making sure that with the tax credit syndicator, we were getting the best price for our tax credit. So I can't say how much um, and how important having a good financial management uh, person to help you um, go through all those processes. Once you close on your financing, you will build and market the project to your employees. The units are affordable, but some tribal communities offer an additional discount of 50 uh, to, you know, to whatever they can afford to provide an additional incentive for employees and to reduce turnover. In the long run, it's worth it. Now that you have your development in my development in your tribal community, it is an asset and helps to build net worth for the tribe. Now you start working on the next program or project. I know it's a never ending job, but it is definitely, you know, job security because you just keep going after the next project. So now we're going to go kind of in depth to each one of these areas. Um, I think the first one we're going to talk about is assembling your development team. And this, I can't, you know, tell you how important this is. These are the, um, you know, once you, okay, you've gained your support and approval from the tribal council. Uh, you're starting to put the rest of your development team together. Again, I can't tell you how important it is to build the right team for your project. You have the developer and the owner, your general contractor, the architect who has to work well with the general contractor, your attorney, um, and your attorney um, should have worked on or has to have worked on an affordable housing development in Indian country. It's so important that they understand those aspects. The property manager, any consultants that you may need, and the accountant. You will also be working with banks, um, and you'll have to deal uh, deal with you know you'll have to deal with banks because you're going to be needing a construction and permanent loan. 
You will also be applying for some grants and other financing that's available. And if you're doing the low income housing tax credit development, you will also be working with the tax credit syndicator. We're going to go over each one of these in more detail. Again, putting your team together is so important. These are your key players for sure. Uh, the development, the developer or owner, um, who in your case would be the tribe through the development arm of the housing department, which is probably the best way to set it up, has the long-term responsibility and control of the project. You know, they started with a vision and we'll see it all the way through till the project construction is complete and the units are all rented. Again, you have already determined if you have the capacity to take on a huge project like this on your own, or if this is your first affordable housing development, you may need to joint venture with a qualified developer that has completed an affordable housing project previously. Uh, when I did my first project in Aurora, um, it was a joint venture uh, because, again, uh, I was a small Native American nonprofit, uh, um, and you need to have a development team that um, can't has the capacity to get these projects from beginning to end. As the developer and owner of the project, you are responsible for the original concept, putting the development team together, determining the financing, overseeing the construction, and making sure that it is on budget and that it is on schedule. You also have to make sure that you are renting to qualified tenants, and that the ongoing management and compliance is being done. These are some of the detailed responsibilities that also that you will be doing. You're going to be in charge of all of the planning aspects of the project. Again, we were talking about, um, you know, determining the site, how many units, all of this has to be done by the developer and the owner. You're going to be in charge of hiring the qualified development team through the request for proposal and RFP or the request for qualifications process. Um, we'll kind of go over that a little bit more later in the pr uh, presentation. You will be continuously be in meetings with your general contractor, your architect, uh, and any of the consultants that you've hired. You will be in charge of negotiating all of the contracts. You will be maintaining the development schedule, the budget, and all the cost estimates. You're also in charge of in charge of overall design, the, the overall design process. Um, it is a lot, but well worth it when the housing is complete and you have a stable housing environment for your tribal employees and tribal members. Remember that not everyone has to be an employee of, of the tribe. They can also just be qualified tribal members for your housing. They just will not uh, you know, get the additional rent subsidy if it's available or the incentive but they, or the incentive of living close to work unless they do live close to work. Next one we want to talk about is your general contractor. Uh, whenever you're doing a large project like uh, affordable housing, it is so important that you have um, the general, con a general contractor um, is, is very, you know, cause they're so, they're going to be overseeing and managing the construction of your house, your affordable housing project. You have to make sure that you are hiring a reputable general contractor, not your hu husband's brother. Uh, you know, we need somebody that has the experience. They have to be available to be on site during the construction phase. Um, 
And, you know, as I mentioned before, the general contractor and the architect will be interacting the most. It's important that they have a good working relationship and are able to work together. They, the, your general contractor will be getting all the bids. Uh, they will be hiring all your subcontractors. But as the developer, you will be working close with your general contractor to make sure that they are getting the best price. That's so important, um, especially in today's market where the, uh, the construction costs are so high. Uh, we have to make sure that value engineering for your project is being done to make sure that uh, we keep the budget in line. And, um, you know, again, value engineering um, to because the construction costs are just so out of control right now. Try and uh, save money wherever you can. Um, the general contractor is also going to be in charge along with the developer to get the permits and scheduling any and all inspections that are required uh, during the construction phase. Uh, next key employee or team member is your architect. You will need an architect that can design your affordable housing within your tight budget. One that understands your the cultural aspects of your tribal community and can design a beautiful, functional development. They will need to work closely with your general contractor and be willing to make any design changes if necessary. Uh, again, with the construction costs, you may need to change some of your, um, how you're building some of the things because uh, maybe the lumber is too long, so you're going to have to use steel beams and vice versa. Instead of using steel beams, they might be using wood beams. So you, they have to be willing to um, negotiate and um, make any design changes that the general contractor thinks uh, or deems will be necessary. They will also review the plans from all of the trades to make sure that the work that they will be able to work within the design of the building. Uh, on my project in Aurora, uh, we, one of our team members was actually uh, one of the members of the architectural team. And it was great to have an architect as one of our development te team partners on the project. Uh, it, it was just amazing because they were able to do a lot of the plans and everything up front without us having to pay them um, every step of the way because they just waited till um, when we closed and they took their fee then. And also they were able to just give so much insight into the project. So again, those team members are very important. Next thing that we want to talk about is your attorney. Uh, your real estate attorney should have a good understanding of affordable housing and the requirements of all of the programs and grants that you are using. They are going to be involved in reviewing all of the contracts and forming any single purpose entities that you may need for your project. They will also help with any environmental or zoning issues that um, that may need to uh, be taken care of. Also, you want to make sure that you have an attorney that if you're doing the low income housing tax credit, you work with an attorney that has done a low income housing tax credit project before and also has a good working relationship with your state housing finance agency. That's very important because they know um, what questions they're going to be asking and a lot of the requirements that um, will be needed for the uh, low income housing tax credit program. Uh, as we all know, property management is key to any of our housing. Um, for our tribal communities, the property management is usually involved in all aspects from collecting the rent, making sure that tenants qualify for the units, maintaining all the tenant files, and providing maintenance for the units. 
And as I had mentioned before, if you're doing the low income housing tax credit uh, development, your tax credit syndicator and the state housing agency will require that third party management company that understands the low income housing tax credit program rules and regulations. Last thing you want to do is, is mess something up and lose credits because uh, that is um, it's not good for you. It's not good for the state housing agency and it's not good um, for the syndicator. And even if you're not using the tax credit, your bank may require a third party management company for a couple of years if your housing department does not have the capacity. Again, the staff can be trained to take over the management in the future. Again, these are some of the key responsibilities of the property manager. They include, but not limited to, um, pre-leasing the units. They need to start leasing at least six months prior to construction completion. We all know that you have a huge wait list for these units, but it takes time to pre-screen the applicants and to get all of the paperwork and files together. Depending on your application process, there will be background, credit, and criminal checks that need to be completed. You have the employment verification and the past and present rental history to be reviewed. Once all of this is complete, the lease package is prepared for the tenant signature. One thing I can stress is that you must be consistent with all applicants. The same process for everyone and document the files with all the um, required paperwork. The management will also be in charge of any tenant complaints or problems after they move in. Property management is a tough job and can be a thankless job, like I mentioned earlier. Um, they're making sure that our tribal members are getting into safe, stable homes, and this is a really a very important job. Uh, the next, um, Team member is going to be your lenders. As the developer, you will be interacting with different banks to get the best rate for your construction and your permanent mortgage. Your tribal community should have a good relationship with local banks and lenders. My suggestion is to start with those banks first. They should be able to offer you the best rates because of your relationships. You also want to start building um, your relationship with your state housing finance agency. You know, find out um, who to talk to. Um, even if you're, even if you're not doing low income housing tax credits. I would give them a call and talk to them about the project that you're um, planning to build, your affordable housing, and that you're doing an employer-assisted housing, because they have other resources uh, for financing other than just the low-income housing tax credits. So you might want to get, they have housing trust funds, they also have some other funds that might be available for your project. So I would start early and um, Contact your state housing finance agency, get a meeting with them, talk to them about your project. And then also there's a qualified allocation plan that all of the states have on their website, that all the state housing agencies have on their website. Take a look at that and what the qualifications are. They're, they have 4%, 9% tax credits and, and just talk to them and see really what would be best and what, what can they do to help you with your project. A lot of um, state housing agencies really do want to do housing in Indian country. And uh, I have to tell you, some states are actually getting uh, in trouble because they're not doing enough low income housing tax credits in Indian country. And um, so they're actually outreaching to try and get more um, uh, low income housing tax credit projects in Indian country. So, 
I would make those phone calls and start building that relationship. It's really important. They also, um, a lot of the state housing finance agencies has home ownership programs where they can actually help you with down payment assistance uh, and, and some of those other pro, other programs for um, home ownership. So definitely make those phone calls and start building that relationship. Uh, the other person, wait, let me go back one second. I'll, oops, back. The other person that, um, if you are doing a low income housing tax credit project, the other person that, um, other team member that you'll be working with is your tax credit syndicator. Um, you'll want to, you know, uh, just like a bank, uh, you want to shop around, uh, you want to make sure that, uh, you're getting the best price for your tax credits. Um, I think we budgeted 82 cents on the dollar, but I think we ended up getting 89 cents for our tax credits. So um, shop around, uh, make sure that you're getting the best um, best price on your tax credits. Um, because more, the higher tax credits are, the more money you have going in to help fund your development. Again, that's another relationship that you want to start building. You want to start talking to some of these tax credit syndicators and um, build that relationship. Next thing we want to talk about is procurement. Uh, we kind of discussed this a little bit earlier. Um, whenever you're starting to hire or trying to um, get your team members on board, um, you need to know what your procurement process that your that governs your affordable housing program. You need to check um, your NAHASDA agreement to make sure what procurement rules apply. Uh, this is very important. Uh, procurement, um, uh, everyone has their own procurement policies. So make sure that when you're hiring your team members that you're doing it um, according to your rules and regulations. Next thing we want to talk about is your, uh, this is kind of how you're going to uh, hire some of your team members. If you don't, um, if you don't have them already in line or if you don't already have a, a team member that you've been working with for several years and you need to hire, uh, uh, an attorney, or if you need to hire an architect, uh, or any of your team members. Um, so again, it's going to be depending upon your pro procurement process. Um, you may need to do a request for qualifications, an RFQ, or a request for proposal, which is an RFP, to hire your development team. The request for qualifications list the requirements of the projects and request the contractors to submit a letter of interest that de details their ability to complete the project. The RFP, which is the request for proposal, is used most frequently and it helps the developer to select the best candidate for the project. To evaluate the request for proposals, you're going to be looking at the price, what the qualifications are, and experiences to make your decision. Okay, I just wanted to kind of go over um, if you are planning to do a low income housing tax credit project, this is kind of going to be your allocation process with the state housing finance agency. Uh, I just have to let you know <laughs> that doing a, a low income housing tax credit project is a really huge endeavor, but it it is really worth it to have a new, beautiful, affordable housing development for your tribal employees and members. And that's why we do it. And then also, when you're doing these projects, um, you receive a developer fee. 
Um, and even if you join venture, you will be receiving part of the developer fee. And that developer fee is what you're going to use to start, uh, will be funds for your next project that you're starting in the future. Again, like we're always working towards that next program and that next project. So those developer fees can be used uh, to start that next project. And again, that's why we do some of these projects. If it was easy, everybody would be doing them. So we do it for the developer fee and to be providing these um, beautiful units for our tribal members. So um, first step here is uh, you start with, uh, before we even start in that beginning box, um, you're going to start, like I said, building that relationship, making that phone call, setting up that meeting to talk with their, um, the state housing agency's um, allocation department. Um, you're going to discuss your project. Uh, and, you know, you've already penciled it out. You already know it's feasible, but um, uh, you're going to need the tax credits to make it work. Um, they will let you know if you are ready to complete the application. You know, if, if you're, you've already gone through all your steps and everything and they said, yes, uh, you're ready. Go ahead and, uh, you know, apply um, and they'll let you know. Again, in the qualified allocation plan, please download that for your state. It will tell you everything about um, when the applications are due, um, the scoring process, what the mandatory items are. So get familiar with the qualified allocation plan even before you call and make that phone call to the state housing finance agency because you need to know what you're going to be talking about. Um, and if, if the state agency, you know, after looking at your project and seeing where you're at in your project, if they think you're ready, then go ahead and they'll say, go ahead and complete the application. If you're approved for an allocation of credits, uh, you will then receive your reservation agreement from the state agency. There is usually an allocation fee due. So um, again, make sure that all these fees are in your budget. Um, you're going to be required to update your application if necessary. Uh, and as we've seen, uh, a lot of people, you know, between application process and by the time that they get approved, uh, construction, construction costs have gone up. So um, they want you to make sure that you update your uh, budgets. If your budgets increase, you need to let them know right away. Um, after um, that, there is uh, at the end of the first year uh, that you receive your credits, there is a carryover allocation document that's required. And then also it's called the 10% test. Um, and this is just stating that you have spent at least 10% of your budget. And this is really proving to the state housing agency and your tax credit syndicator that you're moving forward with the project. Um, also, then we're moving on to your construction completion and your cost certification. And this is going to be completed by your tax credit attorney. You're going to provide any updates to your tax credit application and then place your units in service. Then you're going to be required by the state housing agency to complete a land use restriction agreement. And what this agreement does, it's just stating that um, these units are affordable housing units and that they will remain affordable for up to 30 years. Then you will be issued the, um, from the state housing agency the 86, 8609 form. And again, this is very important. Uh, this is what your tax credit syndicator has been waiting for and the reason why they purchased the credits to begin with. So getting that 8609 is so important. Then you're starting your leasing process to your qualified tenants. Uh, like I mentioned before, I'm sure um, all of you have a vast list, waiting list. Um, so again, that pre-leasing is gonna be very important. And then by the time you can st start leasing your, your um, units when they're available, you can start putting those uh, tenant, those qualified tenants right into those units. 
Then um, at the end, you are going to be required every year uh, to have an annual financial statement, audit, and tax returns completed. Uh, and then the state agency is going to want to see that, and so is your tax credit syndicator and possibly your bank or whoever lend money on the project. Another thing that we we really want to consider when we're doing large projects like this or any project that you're doing in your community and trying to hire Native American companies. We all know that as Native Americans, we are entrepreneurial by heart um, and by culture. We just we like to run our own businesses. We like to uh, be in charge. Um, so the best way that we can help out our Native American companies is to hire them. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, today I see a lot more Native American companies that are actually um, working in the affordable housing industry today. So go ahead um, if you're putting your as you're putting your team together and you're sending out your request for proposals and your request for uh, qualifications. Make sure it's getting out to Native American companies so that they can respond and be, you know, very, this, this positive aspect of your project also. It's, it's so important. Okay, now that, uh, you know, we, we went through over all of the putting your team together, getting that team together and and starting um, once you've got your team together, uh, we're, you know, you're going to do your project and site planning. Uh, you've already kind of um, when you were doing your housing needs assessment and a few other things, you kind of already had your site in mind. Um, you need to you're going to be once you get your site in mind and hopefully you have a site that already has infrastructure to it. <laughs> Uh, but if not, um, you definitely need to get that going as soon as possible. You need to complete or update your budget um, and determine, um, again, what your infrastructure needs are and how many units that you can afford to build. Uh, again, once you've chosen your team, you have your site, you completed your budget, you determined uh, what your infrastructure costs are going to be and put that in your budget. And now you and you've also determined how many units that you're planning to build. It's now time once again to take it to your tribal council for final approval so that you can move forward. Remember, if you do a joint venture, the development will still be owned by the tribe. The um, we call it a turnkey developer um, if somebody's joint venturing, but the tribe is the ultimate owner of the project. Um, the, the, the consultant or your joint venture developer, they will be receiving their developer fee, but then they're um, no longer um, part of the project. Um, they may be in there for like the first uh several years just to make sure that you're maintaining that you if you need any help or any questions they're there to help if you need it next thing we need to do is assemble your financing um once approved um all your financing um that you that you're going to need um whether it's tribal uh or employer funds um tribal land uh, that's being used so that's a lot of times in a lot of these projects the cost of the land is the biggest cost of the project so if you have the land already that is one of the biggest budget items that you don't have to come up with so that it's always great to have that land already uh, that tribal trust land that you'll be using also, you need to uh, make sure that you're getting your mortgage with because uh, you're going to need a mortgage for your construction and permanent financing. You want to make sure that you're getting uh, mortgages with the lowest interest rates 
Um, you need to see if there's any public or private funds. And then also, if you're, you know, using the low income housing tax credits, get, uh, we just went through the whole process of what you have to do with that. So uh, getting that um, application completed so that you can get that allocation of credits. Uh, this is just a brief overview of how the low income housing tax credit program works. It is a federal government program that is run through the IRS. The funds are allocated to your state housing finance agency. And again, uh, the state housing finance agencies have their qualified allocation plan available on site or on their website and it explains exactly how they're going to be allocating these funds to developers to build affordable housing in their state. Low income renters get an affordable home and the tax credit investors purchase the credits and then the money the uh, when they purchase the tax credits that those those funds go directly in to pay for the construction of the project. And then the investor, the tax credit syndicator, will get a 10-year tax credit, and that's why they do it. All right, we're at the final step of uh, putting your affordable housing, your affordable housing project together. So you complete your construction and lease up the units to your employees of your casino, your health center, or any of the tribal employees. And again, uh, these units can also be for your tribal members. If you, if you have enough of them, you don't have to hold units open for just employees. You can also rent them to tribal members. They just will not be able to benefit from, you know, the rental subsidies or any of the other incentives that you'll be providing to your employees. Next thing we want to talk about is, um, I know one of the biggest things that we need is more housing on our reservations, but some communities, especially over the last couple of years with everything we've been going through with COVID, um, building more housing is just not available. So the other option that you have for employer assisted housing is to um, create a program, an affordable, an employer assisted housing program. Um, and again, sometimes also once you did your housing needs assessment, you may have determined that um, you have units available that you can create an employer assisted housing program. Or you have rental units within uh, like a five or 10 mile radius of your casino that you might be able to um, use to rent to your employees. First thing you need to do is commit funds for the program. Put your program requirements together. Um, again, uh, in the resource, there is a guidebook um, in the document, so please download that. Um, it gets it's some has some reference material in there on how to uh, put your employer assisted housing together. Uh, you want to work with partners. Um, there are some state housing finance agencies that will help to provide funds and they also have some matching funds out there. Uh, then you have to market it to your employees. You can choose either home ownership or the rental option. So whatever you need in your community. I know there are some tribes that are even um, uh, up on the Menominee Reservation. I know they're doing some tiny homes um, just uh, so that they have uh, housing that's uh, for their tribal members, we, you know, we're doing whatever, we're trying to be as in, innovative as we can to get housing on our reservations. Next thing we need to do is to commit the funds and set your program requirements. Uh, what funds do you have available? Uh, you know, do you have tribal funds, uh, casino funds, state, federal, or local funds? 
you need to put your program requirements together and that will include loan and grant terms for the home homeownership. What are the employee requirements? Do they have to be on the job for at least six months to qualify? Uh, what is the dollar amount of the benefit for your program? Is it $50 a month off their rent? Uh, you know, so all this has to be uh, outlined in your uh, requirements. You can work with other partners that are already doing the EEH program, the Employer Assisted Housing Program, to help design your own program. Uh, there are home buyer educators and counselors out there that are already doing this in a place so that you don't have to um, do this. You can team up with uh, a program that's already doing the employer assisted housing um, home buyer educating the counseling and sometimes you you know in your pro requirements you may require that they have a certificate for completing the home buyer counseling program uh it's and i think it every anyone that's going to be a new homer owner should be going through this process and that should be part of your requirements also lenders and re realtors can help you um, design your program also, you want to be looking for opportunities for matching funds through your local government, uh, state and federal funds. Once you've got your program together, then you need to market it to your employees. For the home ownership, you can help with down payment and closing costs. Uh, for rental, you need to let them know what the rent subsidy will be. And you can also help um, your applicants with the application process, uh, working on their credit. Um, if there's moving costs, you can help them with the moving costs. Um, if uh, you're helping them um, rent within the community to a private landlord. You can help uh, with the deposits that they may require. Um, there may be, um, the tribe may be a possible rent guarantee for some of these units. Um, you design your own pro program based on your tribal community needs. Uh, this is some of the um, material that you're going to need as you're putting your employer assisted housing program together. A memorandum of understanding that spells out what the incentive the employee will be receiving. Again, if it's, you know, the $50 or whatever, um, whatever that um, incentive is or whatever the subsidy is, all needs to be spelled out in your memorandum of understanding. You're going to need um, an application form, a release of information, and an intake form. Um, if it's your employee, you may not need the two most recent pay stubs, but again, that's something that you might require. Uh, most current W-2, um, and this might be for uh, when you're doing the home ownership, and provide the uh, employee with an eligibility announcement letter. So once you've gone through, they provided you all the information, they completed the intake form, they provided all the information that you're requesting, you should have some type of uh, announcement letter that will let them know that they've been approved for your employer assisted housing program. And again, we'll be after that you will be signing the uh, memorandum of understanding with the um, employee. Uh, on the bottom there is the link to the um, Employer Assisted Housing Guidebook, but again, it's available through the download also. Some uh, final uh, key notes are, it's important, uh, your important steps are your planning. Again, 
you need to determine the site and that's kind of and your budget so your planning process is going to be you need to do this well in advance uh these affordable housing projects if you're building uh can take up to four years so it it, it is a, a large and uh cumbersome planning process um you also uh, need to plan if you're putting uh, a program together so again your planning is very important and then communication letting your employees know that um, this benefit is going to be part of their employee package um, and uh, getting that out to them is very important and then also the implementation and putting your pro program into action is is very important you know you can put your programs and things together but getting it and implementing and, and, and putting it into action is when you know it's real For the employer uh, assisted housing, who benefits? Uh, benefits, uh, your employer is going to benefit, um, your employees' families will benefit, and the community, your tribal community in general, will benefit from an, an employer assisted housing program. The employer benefits through employee re recruitment, being able to offer housing near work. I know that um, in some tribal communities, um, the tribal health centers have such a problem recruiting doctors because there's a lack of housing. So if you can build a few homes and then provide some incentive for them to, to come to your community, um, it, it's, it's really, really important. Uh, it also helps to provide a stable work in, workforce. Employees are now more productive, human resource savings uh, with less turnover, and also just being a civic leader for your tribal community by providing these benefits is so important. How does the worker benefit? They have uh, home and family stability there's reduced commute time and expense especially today with the cost of gas um, there's better work performance you have more time to help with the child the child your children with homework and attending their events and also lower housing costs can afford to uh, so um, your employees can afford to pay for other goods and entertainment and you know doing fun things how does the community benefit it helps to meet housing needs in your tri tribal community by um, building uh, increasing the supply of housing or by working with um, um, private landlords to provide that housing it helps to provide stability in the community and also reinvesting in your community. Uh, when you reinvest in your community, now you have an asset um, for the tribe. It's also positive engagement with your community. When you're providing these, uh, these benefits, it's, it just makes the community benefit as a whole. Also, you're leveraging resources for this great benefit. And also you're uh, showing the com community leadership. And again, we need to do as much positive things as we can. Uh, we've gone through a couple of really challenging years and being able to be positive and come out um, uh, by being able to provide this for our community is, um, it would be great. Uh, I just wanted to go over uh, a couple of things here at the end. I uh, wanted to just talk a little bit about the project that I just completed in Aurora, uh, Illinois. It's called Fox Valley Apartments. And again, um, putting that team together is so important. Uh, this project, uh, we put it into the Illinois Housing Development Authority. Uh, our team, um, again, was the architect. Um, it was one of the development partners of the architect uh, as he was coming in as an individual. 
and then uh, we had another development partner that had done a lot of housing, but it was market rate housing. And he was, uh, you know, owned restaurants and things like that, but he did not understand the affordable housing concept or aspect. So that's why they brought uh, me into the project um, for, uh, because I had been with the state housing agency for 20 years. But again, I had not completed a low income housing tax credit project. So we uh, had to reach out to the state housing finance agency. Uh, we met with uh, the multifamily department. Um, we went over all of our qualifications for the project. And we before we even submitted an application, or in this case in Illinois, they have a preliminary project assessment. So you have to do that before you can do a full application. But we didn't even want to put in the preliminary project assessment until we talked to the state housing agency and made sure that they were uh, that our team was uh, sufficient with all of our qualifications and uh, they did approve us um, we did put our preliminary project assessment in um, we did it in a week uh, or two weeks i think it was by the time we got the approval we put our preliminary project assessment in and then we um were approved through that to put our full application in and was awarded the allocation of credits in May of 2021. And then uh, we had to start working towards closing all of our financing and uh, putting the rest of our team together. And it was very challenging, very challenging um, during this uh, COVID, <laughs> COVID years um, with the construction costs going up. And um, uh, so we had, uh, one contractor that bid the project out and for the application. And then when we uh, went to bid it out completely it was over about, I think it was like, I forget if it was like $5 million over and we just couldn't do that. Uh, so we ended up having to switch contractors midstream. Uh, and that really, um, took a, a lot of uh, toll on the on the project and time. And you don't have a lot of time when you're trying to do all this stuff. The next thing that happened was um, because of, and it wasn't just our project, every project that received an allocation of credits in 2020 and in 2021, uh, the cost overruns uh, were just, uh, because of the construction cost increases was just, um, was too much for all the projects. So next thing that um, uh, the state housing agency did was they received um, some uh, COVID funds to help these projects. So we ended up having to go back in to the state housing finance agency and um, we asked for $1.7 million in the COVID relief funds and were awarded those projects. So again, we had to go back to the board for that. So it was it was a really long process. Um, we just closed last month, which uh, we were hoping to close in April, uh, but with everything. And again, uh, this project was the most complicated project I'd ever seen or worked on. It was the adaptive reuse of two elementary schools. We had the full support of the Aurora mayor of the uh the aurora alder um alderman and then also um the schools were donated were being donated to the city of aurora and then the city of aurora was donating them to my nonprofit or our nonprofit. so we had uh, a lot of support and then also the city of aurora put in 2.6 million dollars of their home funds and also um Four hundred thousand dollars in uh, no, it was um, yeah, of um, housing development block grant funds that they have. So they put a lot of funds into this project, and then we also because they were historic buildings, um, we uh, ended up going for the historic tax credits. So we had to do a part one of the. Uh, to the State Housing Preservation Office, and we had to do a part two, very time consuming. And then um, we are receiving, so we're also getting 
historic tax credits. Um, and then because the buildings were being donated, we were able to get state donation tax credits to the state housing finance agency. Um, and uh, so again, and then we also got a few other small grants from ComEd. And I mean, this was again, just layering. And then we had to get our tax credit syndicator, which we shopped around and shopped around. And uh, we had to get uh, our bank. We had to deal with our bank that was doing our construction loan and our uh, permanent mortgage. Uh, so yeah, very, very complicated project. But again, um, I just got noticed this morning, we have all of our permits and construction will be starting within the next couple of days. So uh, it has been a great process, uh, a lot of, uh, uh, and also our attorney, um, I worked with Applegate and Thorne Thompson. I worked with them uh, with the, when I was with the state agency. So I've known them for over uh, 25 years. And I told our team, I will not do this project without um, Applegate and Thorne Thompson on this project because it's so complicated. So again, putting that team together uh, is very important. So one of the things um, I just... Uh, want to say in conclusion uh, we are doing a great job in indian country but we can do much more to expand the affordable housing and economic development we should be accessing all the federal state and local funds available and accessing capital funds like everyone else Encourage your tribal leaders to create your vision for housing and economic development in your community and then find the right team and resources to make your vision a reality. Remember the goal of your employer assisted housing is to help employers help their workforce afford a home or rental unit near work. I uh, want to um, end also here if, to see if there's any questions that anyone has. Thank you, Shelly. That was amazing, as always. And congratulations on the Aurora Project. I'm so excited to see the outcome. And definitely, uh, once uh, you guys have your grand opening, we're going to all rally around you. This is a, an amazing project. And uh, uh, just a wonderful presentation. And thank you so much. I believe, uh, Dare Lynn, uh had a question on uh are tax credits only available for low-income projects yes that's the whole uh reason that it's for um uh it goes up to 60 percent of the area median income so um it's for workforce housing it, it really does help with workforce housing because we, you know we have a lot of a lot of our service employees are making a lot of money and uh you know some of our uh uh casino employees they're you know they're they're not making a lot of money so these uh low income house these low um rents are helping them to afford a beautiful home and to live close to work but yes it is for low income uh, projects. Perfect. Thank you so much. If anybody else has any questions, um, make sure you drop them in the chat box. I'm going to push out today's uh, feedback survey. So if you'd be so kind as to complete that and fill it out, we really do um, appreciate it. Uh, our next webinar is going to be on July 21st. And we're going to talk about capacity building for your housing projects, and that'll be presented by Brandy Liberty. Uh, if you um, want to check out any of our other recorded webinars, you can go to the nativelearningcenter.com. Uh, also, um, visit our um, all of our social media platforms to stay in the know on what's going on in Indian housing and news throughout all of, of Indian country. Uh, and I just want to give a quick shout out. I see Rochelle Redbone, who's attending our webinar today. She is from my hometown, Anadarka, Oklahoma. She is also a, a, a very close friend of my oldest daughter, Shauna. Uh, they're like 
like sister. So I've known Rochelle practically all her life. So thanks for joining us, Rochelle. It's good to see you uh, in the in the webinar today. Thank you, everyone, and we hope to uh, hear from you again when our next webinar is going to be on Wednesday. Again, thank you, Shelley. It's always a, a pleasure and a joy to work with you. And good luck on all of your projects. And we'll catch you on the next webinar. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, thank you, Gigi. Just wanted to um, add one last uh, point here is that um, I will be doing the webinar on the 27th of July. And it's going to be talking about um, urban Indian housing. And uh, I'm going to go through the process of uh, our, uh, as a case study, the project I'm currently working on, which is the first urban Native American housing development in Chicago's history. Um, it's uh, great that they're finally reaching out to our community. We've been here in Chicago. We're on the third and fourth generation of Native Americans in the urban area. And um, uh, if you want to, uh, tune into that one. Uh, I'll let you know how we're doing uh, urban Indian housing. Thank you so much, everyone. Perfect. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.